Let's move back to the DNA. Presented on the screen now is a representation of the gene. Notice that the gene has many different segments. Each segment plays a role in the transcription of the gene. Notice first the coding region. The coding region is the part of the gene that actually gets transcribed into RNA. And in this case, we're talking about mRNA. Notice that even within this region, we have something called exons and something else called introns. We'll get to that in a second. A gene can also have a promoter site. There's one here, and there's another one actually here. Promoter regions are bound by transcription factors, which can then recruit RNA polymerases to begin transcription of the gene. Promoters can be very long DNA sequences, but they often contain characteristic motifs which recruit transcription factors and RNA polymerases to the site. These motifs are known as TATA, or TATA boxes, and CAAT, or CAT boxes. Enhancer elements are essentially another kind of promoter. Enhancers can sometimes be found way upstream of the gene, almost thousands of base pairs away. They can also be found downstream of genes. In a few cases, they are actually found within the genes themselves. For simplicity, this one is drawn upstream of the gene and not too far away from the promoter site. Repressor sequences are more common in prokaryotic genomes, but they essentially do the opposite of promoters. They result in the inhibition or silencing of certain genes. Now, let's talk a little bit about RNA processing. Now, previously, I made a little lie. When RNA polymerase II transcribes the DNA, it doesn't immediately produce mRNA. The initial transcript is actually called heterogeneous nuclear RNA. It only becomes mRNA after a few modifications have taken place. The first modification is called the 5' prime cap. Here, a 7-methyl guanosine is added to the beginning of the transcript. The second is called polyadenylation, and this happens on the other end, on the 3' prime end. In this case, roughly 60 to 200 adenine residues are added to the end of the transcript. This is depicted here. The last modification is the removal of introns from the transcript, and we'll talk about that in more detail later. But once these modifications have taken place, we now have a mature mRNA strand. Now realize that only processed RNA is transported out of the nucleus. Now remember in the last slide, I mentioned that one of the RNA processing steps was known as splicing. Let's talk about that now. Now remember, splicing occurs on the heterogeneous nuclear RNA. Until splicing occurs, the mRNA transcript cannot leave the nucleus. And of course, because we're talking about a nucleus, we're talking about a process that only occurs in eukaryotes. So remember, this heterogeneous nuclear RNA, or pre-mRNA as we're calling it here, has to receive a 5' prime cap, a poly-A tail, and undergo the splicing process before it can exit the nucleus and be translated into protein. The whole point of splicing is to get rid of segments in the transcript that are known as introns. Introns are non-coding sequences of the transcript. That means these sequences are not translated into protein. Although these segments are not translated into protein, they probably have functions which have not yet been identified. In any case, let's talk about the steps which remove these segments from the transcript. First, the transcript must combine with small nuclear ribonucleoproteins, or SNRNPs, to form a large complex known as the spliceosome. Next, a lariat or loop shaped structure is formed, and then this loop is removed to bring together two exons, which will be translated. You can see this process in the schematic here. So let's go over it one more time. So here are our exons, and this segment here is our intron. The spliceosome is assembled and catalyzes the formation of this loop. The loop itself is removed, and when this occurs, exon 1 is brought in proximity to exon 2. Although the mechanistic steps are not terribly important for the USMLE step 1, you should be familiar with this concept. Also realize that patients with lupus, for some reason, make antibodies against the spliceosomal complex. Now again, the mechanistic steps of the spliceosome are less important than the concept of introns and exons. Here we have a schematic of a gene. You can see that the gene itself is organized into introns and exons. 
Now remember, the first product that is produced by RNA polymerase 2 is known as HNRNA, or heterogeneous nuclear RNA. After 5' prime capping, the addition of the polyadenylate tail and the removal of introns, we get an mRNA transcript, which is allowed to exit the nucleus and be translated into protein. Now the thing to realize is that exons can actually be combined in a number of ways. So for example, a cell might put together exon 1, 2, 3, and 4 to produce this kind of transcript, but it could also select exons 1, 3, and 4 to produce a unique mRNA transcript and protein product. In fact, these exons can be combined in any number of ways, each producing its own unique product, and this idea is known as alternative splicing. Because of alternative splicing, a single gene can encode for different proteins. And this is a source of diversity in the cell. Now even though this source of diversity can be a benefit to the cell, it can sometimes result in disease. For example, some mutations that give rise to beta thalassemia are actually caused by mutations in introns, not exons. In this case, a mutation in an intron gives rise to an alternatively spliced product that is not normally produced. In the case of beta thalassemia, a hemoglobin molecule is produced which is not as efficient or functional as the wild type. So although alternative splicing is a useful process by which the cell can produce a variety of different protein products, it can sometimes result in disease. If you're having trouble remembering introns from exons, just recall this mnemonic. Introns are intervening sequences and stay in the nucleus. They are not translated, whereas exons exit the nucleus and are expressed. They are translated.